Hey guys, it is Patrick. And before you dive into this intermediate accounting lesson, I wanted you to know that you can actually download the notes for this section and specifically this lesson that you're about to watch if you head to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com or you can head over to the description link that's below and I'll put that link to those notes below where you can find them, download them, and print them, and follow along as you watch this lesson. So go do that, and here is your intermediate accounting lesson. All right, in this lesson, we are going to do an overview of qualitative characteristics, and then we will break off into other lessons where we'll dive a little bit deeper in all of the elements that we'll discuss in this lesson. So let's get started by talking a little bit about qualitative characteristics. So at the heart of our objective, obviously, in financial accounting is to make sure information is useful to external users. But what makes information useful from a practical standpoint? How do we know something is useful to our investors? Well, we've got these qualitative characteristics that we can kind of follow to ensure that if we do these things, they do become useful to our investors. So we've got something called the hierarchy of qualitative characteristics. These are things that we should be thinking about um, when it comes to making sure that we are doing exactly what we need to do so that they, uh, the financial statements are appropriate for our shareholders. The first one, the you know, the main thing here is that we want to make sure that we have decision usefulness. Well, how do we accomplish decision usefulness? Well, we accomplish decision usefulness by making sure that the financial statements are relevant and there is this level of faithful uh, representation. That's called the fundamental characteristic. So fundamentally, the financial statements need to be relevant and they must have faithful representation. Well, what does relevance mean? Well, relevance means that there is predictive value, meaning that I can kind of predict what's going to happen based on the financial statements of the past confirmatory value, meaning that when I make those projections and then we go into the future, I can actually confirm my assumptions or disprove my assumptions. And then materiality, which we'll get to again later on, but um, is it material to the user? If it's material to the user, have we included it in the financial statement? Otherwise, that might make the financial statements irrelevant because we have this major thing that we didn't put in the financial statement that would have changed the decision making on the investor's part. When it comes to faithful representation, what that means is that are the financial statements complete? Are they neutral, meaning that they're not biased? And are they free from errors? We call those component aspects of those fundamental characteristics or the fun, yeah, for fundamental characteristics. Now, furthermore, we can add something called enhancing characteristics. So we've got this basic fundamental characteristics that we have to deal with, but then we have something called enhancing characteristics. So these are characteristics that will enhance the information that we provide to external users. Are they important? Well, if they enhance the financial statement, then it's even doing more to ensure that the information that we provide to decision makers are useful on their end. So we've got four enhancing characteristics. One is uh, comparability and consistency, making sure that we can actually compare um, we can compare our financial statements with other companies. When we talk about consistency, we want to make sure that we can be consistent from one period to another so that we don't change off how something is valued or how something is reported on the financial statement. Uh, another element of enhancing characteristics for decision usefulness is verifiability. Can we actually verify it? When I mean verify, can we have someone else do it and get to the same or similar answer? Timeliness. Obviously, if something is not timely, it becomes obsolete. So we want to make sure financial statements are reported in a timely manner. And then understandability. Can a regular person who has a minimum knowledge of business concepts, so they have to have a minimum knowledge of business concepts, can they even understand your financial statement or can they not understand your financial statement? Now, we do have some constraints. I have one here that's an overarching one, but we have actually two, um, and that is the cost effectiveness. What is the benefit that we're going to gain, and what is the cost to obtain that gain? Are 
benefits must exceed gain. So there must be this situation in which the benefits that we would receive would be uh, more than what it would cost us to obtain that information. So cost effectiveness is important. So at the minimum, financial statements should be relevant and have faithful representation. When it comes to relevant, information has little value if it's not relevant to the shareholders. They want to know how the information can make a difference in their decision-making process. Don't give me fluff. So meaning that, you know, can this information actually assist me in the decision that I'm trying to make? So when it comes to, let's say, a disclosure of dividends, well, will that help me understand whether or not I can, um, make decisions based on that. Well, yeah, dividends is important because that's a return of earnings and the higher the return of earnings becomes more of a question of, do they not need this to expand to try to make more money in the future? Or maybe it is a gesture to ensure investors know that their, um, their top priorities are kept in mind when it comes to executing the company's operations. When it comes to faithful representation, is the information, uh, is the information, for instance, on its, uh, well, first of all, faithful representation means that you're faithful representing what has happened in your organization. So this is kind of a little bit odd here. Uh, is the information uh, on Instagram or social media or is it the real deal? What is actually going on in the life of the company? Good or bad, the information must reflect what actually happens, not what would make you look good. So what I'm saying here is basically, you know, is this the highlight reel of your life, meaning the highlight reel of the financial statement, or is this actually what you're going through? And we know that people put their highlight reels on social media and it doesn't actually reflect what um, their life is actually all about. They're not always on yachts and they're not always in million dollar mansions. Frankly, they just took the pictures off Google and then post them on social media as if they were on this far-fledged area of the world. So these fundamentally, we wanna make sure financial statements are relevant and that they are faithfully representing the actual activities of the organization. So that is a look at a high level of the qualitative characteristics. In the next few lessons, we're actually gonna dive deep in some of those elements that we talked about in our hierarchy of qualitative characteristics. So until then, we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching this lesson. If you enjoy what you saw, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to write something in the comment section below, like, I don't know, what's your favorite superhero? If you are looking for the next intermediate accounting lesson, make sure you click on this button right over here. And if you wanna to head to my website and see all of the lessons that are available, make sure you head to my website right here. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.